So today we're going to be talking about the 2021 M1 iPad Pro. Dream team. What would be love? What is up everybody? My name is Timothy. Welcome to my channel and if you've been here before, welcome back. This specific model is the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro and I'll be honest, I've been very back and forth on whether I wanted to make a video and jump on the trends of everybody reviewing it and talking about the specs, but then I was thinking it's just an iPad. But obviously I am making a video on it, so my thoughts have changed. Now in this video, I'm not really going to get into the specs. All I care about is does it do what I need it to do? And quite frankly, it does for the most part. But roughly about five months ago, I decided I really wanted to start traveling again, start making more vlogs. But the problem that I had was that I was editing all of my videos on a 2013 MacBook Pro, which doesn't really handle 4K video. And I also did not want to wait for the new M1 laptops to come out. So a couple of months ago, I decided to get the M1 Mac Mini, which is right behind me, and the M1 iPad Pro, because I figured this is smaller, it's a lot cheaper, and would I be able to do what I need to do with it? Spoiler, I can do what I need to do with it. So like I said, I'm not really a specs kind of person. I'm just gonna tell you what I love about it and how it fills the needs that I have. Now I'm gonna break this video down into three parts. Video editing, photo editing, and then entertainment. Let's tackle photos first. Now, if you've been on my channel before, you know I primarily am a photographer. I love photography. And for me, Lightroom, Photoshop are the two main apps that I use to get what I need to do done. So when I'm editing my photos on the go, I use Lightroom Mobile. You can download it on the iPad, you can download it on your phone. Now my honest opinion, Lightroom Mobile is pretty much the perfect app for me at least to calibrate my photos because it's exactly like the desktop app. And if you're used to Lightroom Classic, it's pretty much the exact same thing except for the layout is a little different. And that's about it. So if you're concerned about the color grading quality and whatnot, it is spot on. But I also did mention I use Photoshop a lot to edit my images and the Photoshop app on the iPad is a joke. It is caca. It is horse doo doo. It is not worth your time. I'm pretty sure that in future updates they could fix the application and the usability of it. But right now, as I'm making this video, don't even bother. And it really baffles me that if the Lightroom team at Adobe can create such an awesome app for mobile devices, why can't the Photoshop team do the same? I do have to clarify the things that I don't like about the Photoshop app, and that is the masking is difficult, certain features are unavailable, stacking is not friendly. Like, personally, I prefer using the desktop version rather than the mobile version. I actually don't even touch the mobile app even though I have it, but it is what it is. Now let's move on to video editing. And if we stay with Adobe, your only option is Adobe Rush. And to be completely honest, again, it's a absolute rubbish app to be using because it is no different than iMovie. It is so basic and primitive, it is frustrating. Plus, the amount of layers you can add, like layers of video and audio, ah, it's, it's frustrating. But there is a workaround and thank the heavens for LumaFusion. This app makes the user experience so easy. So if you're used to editing on, let's say, Final Cut or Premiere Pro and maybe even DaVinci, the learning curve is so minimal, you can just immediately start using it like I did. And if you want an example, this entire video was shot in C-Log 4K and was edited on the iPad Pro. Now, if you are a creator and you want to go fully mobile and start editing your videos or your vlogs on the iPad and you want a color grading tutorial on LumaFusion, just comment down below. I will be more than happy to make it because it is actually so easy and there are a couple of tricks in there that make the experience a little more fun. It's like learning a new skill. Now, when it comes to work and creating content, the things I love the most about this iPad is how thin it is and how light it is. It's thinner than a notebook and it just reduces my everyday carry and anything that makes my backpack lighter, my back thanks it. <laughs> and this is where I compare it to a laptop because now that they're done with the lightning cable and it's USB-C, all you need is a adapter, a dongle like this, connect it, and then you can take any of your portable SSDs, plug it in because this one has a USB-C, it has a USB, an HDMI, and a memory card slot. So you just pop that in, you can just go into your files, drag and drop and back your stuff up. Now I found out that this setup really comes in handy when you're working on a project with another creative or you're second shooting a wedding for example and you need to backup files or transfer files, 
you can do it right then and there. And you don't have a laptop. That is just, ah, it's like my favorite thing about this. And another great part of it is when you're editing video and photos, you can edit right off your SSD drives to save space on the iPad, which in turn comes back to the fact that if you don't want to spend money on the one terabyte iPad, I have the 512 gigabytes, but if you wanted the lowest level memory, get it because it's cheaper. Now staying on the content creation side of things, I do have to mention that I do not own an Apple Pencil, even though I've used one and it is fantastic technology. I just didn't want to spend an extra 150 bucks on a pencil. So I got this one off Amazon for about 20 or $25. And quite honestly, it does what it needs to do. It doesn't do all the fancy double tap to go to eraser or you can customize it to do whatever you want it to do. But when I'm editing and I need to mask things out, it works fine. It's pretty responsive. I'll link it down below. Everything I mentioned for accessories will be linked down below. So if you want to pick something up, you should. Now moving on to the part that really excited me because I wasn't expecting it is the entertainment side of what this iPad offers. And I'm not talking apps like Netflix and Hulu, I'm talking about gaming. When I was a teenager, I was an avid gamer and I haven't done it for years and now I'm slowly getting back into it. And the fact that I can connect my Xbox One controller to the iPad and then play like I was playing on the Xbox. I can play games like COD Mobile, which I used to be a massive COD fan and Halo fan when I was a teenager. So very exciting for me when I found that out. Plus the 12.9 inch screen is the perfect size in my opinion. Some might say it's too big, but to me it's the perfect size to do everything I need to do. Edit photos, edit video, and play video games. It's perfect. I mean, if you're also wanting to watch TV, it's pretty much like a MacBook mini. So. There you go. I know I said I connect my Xbox One controller to it, but you can also connect your PlayStation controllers to it. Now all you have to do to connect your controllers to your iPad is to go to your settings, go to your Bluetooth tab, turn on your controller, click the connect button, wait for the signal to come up that says pair with controller, and bada bing, bada boom, you are ready to play. You can play Fortnite, you can play COD Mobile, you can play a ton of games. If you Google what ISO games are compatible with controllers, you will have the time of your life. Because quite honestly, it's helping me de-stress and kind of escape from the world recently, so it's fantastic. Now let's just talk about all the accessories I use with the iPad. First things first, protection. So this is a protective cover that I got for the iPad. It works like a book, basically protects the screen, protects it from drops, and works as a stand. Now I did order the protective case off Amazon. If you wanna check it out, the link is in the description down below. You can see what varieties they have and colors, but I went with this one because it's a little more classy rather than wild and plasticky and fake leathery. So in all honesty, for the price, I am super happy with it because I've had it for four months and it still looks brand new. Then let's move on to the smart pencil that is compatible with the iPad and we've already gone over it. It was like 20 to $25. Again, it's linked down below if you want to check it out. Then we have this little guy from Anchor, which I've already showed you. It's a little dongle that you connect to the iPad. It allows you to connect an HDMI, your SSDs, your memory cards, and a USB-C port, which I usually use as the charger while I'm editing because I don't want the iPad to die while I'm working. So great investment. And while I'm still talking about the accessories that help me with my creative workflow, I cannot not mention the SSDs. Now this one is by Western Digital. It's a 500 gigabyte SSD. This is my editing drive. And then I have my SanDisk SSD, which is my backup drive. And this is the one terabyte. The Western Digital SSD is not gonna run you anywhere from $80 to $100, whereas the SanDisk is gonna run you from 130 to 150. And lastly, for my audio, I use my AirPods because they work great and they're small and they're easy to carry. Again, all of this is miniature so that I make my everyday carry easy, right? So yeah, I got these free with the iPad, so not gonna complain. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the 2021 M1 iPad Pro after using it for four months. So if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, smash that like button. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it does help with the algorithm. So do it. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm outies. Goodbye.